What's going on guys? Welcome back to Season 3 my NHL 22 Seattle Kraken Franchise Mode Series. If you guys missed the last episode, again we're a first round knock in the playoffs. Hopefully you can finally get by the first round in this episode. I'm going to show you guys the lines here. Very excited to see how this team plays this season. We've got Goudreau, Malik, and Wenberg on the first line. Malik was a big pickup last trade deadline. Helps the power play get plus 5. So hoping for big things from him this season. Second line here, you got Eberle, Beniers, and Yamamoto getting a plus 2. This is Beniers' rookie season. So Hoping he can win the Calder, but he's going up against Bedard and Michkov, so it's going to be tough. McCann, Gorge, Schwartz, they very solid third line, especially with the plus two. Brown, Appleton, Lynn, also pretty solid fourth line. Defensively here, Giordano, Latang, still our top pair with the plus five. Fabro and Miller, brand new second pair, quite young, still growing. Shlowski, Flurry there on the bottom pair. Goaltending wise, Grubauer there is still the starter. Di Pietro backing him up. As I mentioned before, with Malik in the power play, now is a plus five, so. Hopefully that power play can be good this season. Second year is honestly pretty solid even without any boost. Four man there. PK gets a plus two. Three man's a zero and a minus one. We'll take it. I feel like our special teams are actually looking not too bad. HL team wise, Sveshnikov, Xavier Borgo, and Christian Veselainen. I think it's a very capable first line. Uh, Melanson, Steenberger, Hosang as well. Decent second line. Unfortunately we get minus one in the fourth line, but best we can do. Defensively here, Susie Johansson. Both uh, 80 and 81 respectively get a plus 3, Rathbone and Fleury get a plus 2, like our HLD is insane, even goalies there, Ian Scott, Jesper Wallstedt, I feel like we're pretty set for goalies as well. Uh, if you guys missed the last episode, I'm pretty sure I named Giordano the captain in that one. The two alternates are both Everly and Latang. Also too, I thought it was cool when we looked at the record book last time, and I figured because Seattle Kraken is a new team, why not just take a quick look at it? every season, see like who the new leading scorer all time is. Right now it's Jordan Everly there with 133 points. Leader in goal is Jane Schwartz with 60. So we'll kind of see how that changes throughout the franchise. Give you guys a look at the overalls next here, offense, defense, and goaltending. As you can see there, offense is 94, defense 89, goaltending 86. So like I said, pretty excited to see how this team plays. Let's get started with the sim. And real quick guys, I want to give a huge shout out to Bounty Sports for sponsoring today's video. They're a daily fantasy sports platform that's changing things up with a simple, easy to use pick em style where all you have to do is pick the teams that are going to win that night opposed to building a fantasy lineup. Signing up is super easy, it takes about 10 seconds, and if you use my code TACTICS, you'll actually get $5 for free, no deposit necessary, so you can literally go on the site and win free money. Once you have your $5, you want to choose which contest to enter. They have a ton of different ones to choose from. Obviously, I'll be choosing NHL, but a variety there for sure. The entry fees are cheap, usually ranging from $1 to $25, but the prices are quite big. I think they get as high as $1,000. Uh, so for this one, guys, we're simply going to enter the NHL Pick'em $5 contest. So all we have to do is predict which teams are going to win on opening night. If you choose the favorite, like Tampa Bay here, you'll get one point. And if you choose the underdog, you'll get more than one point. Basically, you're hoping for the most points from that night. You can choose all the favorites, but you're going to be capped at a pretty low score. For opening night, I think Tampa Bay defending cup champs do beat the Penguins. Honestly, I'm rocking with the Kraken, their first ever game. I think they're going to come out buzzing and beat the Golden Knights on the road. Got to take the Leafs there against the Canadians, get some revenge for last year's playoffs. I'm going to go with the Rangers there against the Capitals. I think the Rangers might make the playoffs this year. Definitely the Avalanche over the Blackhawks. Oilers over the Canucks. How are you going to bet against McDavid and Saddle? And finally, hammer the Jets versus the Ducks. My maximum points there is 8.5, but I'm picking all the teams I think are going to win. Enroll, it's that easy. $5 to enroll, confirm. There we go. The total prize pool for that contest is $135. First place takes home 60 bucks. Plus there's other prizes there for second to sixth. So not too bad. Again, all you gotta do is click the link in the description box below and use my code TACTICS for a free $5 when you're starting out. No deposit necessary. I highly recommend giving Boundary Sports a try. Now guys, let's get back to the video. We're just going off here guys from Minnesota Wild. Jake Gardner now has 7th potential in a 3rd round pick for Xavier Borgo, a 2nd and our 3rd. So basically Gardner for Borgo in a 2nd. Uh, one of the worst offers I think I've received yet. Now here we actually have a pretty good offer. Tyler Toffoli, David Savard from Montreal Canadiens, Borgo in a second. They both must be on the block. My assistant GM must have done that. Toffoli here, 86 overall. He's got an X factor. Uh, I think that's 1T. I mean, he's a good sniper. What's his shot? Yeah, basically a 90 across the board. Savard's an 82. Doesn't really help with our D. And Borgo, 21, 75 EM top 6. I feel like he's going to be an NHL player for us pretty soon. Toffoli, I feel like we already have enough forward depth, so... Gonna say no to this one. Also, guys, we're at the Christmas break here with a record of 18, 13, and 4. Take a look where we are on the division. Sixth place. Wow, competitive division. 40 points. Three teams there. We're one point back of a playoff spot, or I should say one point back of a guaranteed one. They're in the division. Malkin, 39, 35. So, continues to produce even as he's getting older. Just gonna let you off here, guys, from the Carolina Hurricanes. Brady Shea, Nikita Kusev for two second rounders. I remember when we got Skusev signed for like 1.4, and now he's making 5.8. Again, I think I mentioned last episode, we totally revitalized his career. 
Again, Minnesota trying to trade as a gardener. I don't want a dude who's got 7th D potential. We have so many good young defensemen on the AHL. We do not need them. I'm thinking actually we'll probably try and trade one or two of them at the deadline, get an asset back, because basically not helping our team in the AHL, and there's a good chance we, you know, we'll lose them for nothing this offseason. So at the deadline here, 35, 24, and 5. We're playing pretty good hockey. I think we were third in the division there, 75 points. Canucks there, three games in hand, already have 77. Malkin's now a little under a point per game, 59 and 64, but... Still playing pretty well, cannot complain about that. So at the deadline here, I'll call us a conservative buyer. I don't think I'm going all out or anything because, you know, this division has been so close. Don't want to risk giving up a first round pick and then it somehow wins the lottery. So let's see. So far, nothing crazy here. I feel like just a lot of decent players. I guess, you know, Aho, I kind of skipped over at the very start. Aho is a superstar, 91 overall, one year left there on that offer sheet contract from Montreal. Can we get him in, though? That's the question. Tori Krug, 87. Would help with our D. The value there looks low, but again, with the new trade value, it's actually probably pretty decent. Terry Vine as well. Imagine if Carolina lost both those guys this season to free agency. That'd be a tough pill to swallow, I think, for them. Uh, six years left. Adam Pellick there, making just under six. So I'll probably go take a look at all three of those top guys. Aho and Terry Vine on Carolina, as well as Krug on St. Louis. So Aho, wow. He's got a ton of value. Terry Vine in it, not as much, but just for comparison's sake, Aho there's at like the V. Do we even have Matthew Savoy, 20 years old, 81 overall already, playing in junior right now, again, just mopping the floor once he got 62 points, I think, and he's not even close to Aho, so that would cost us, yeah, so many assets. Yeah, I just don't think it's worth it, but Tory Krug, maybe Terry Vine in, we'll take a look at. All right, guys, so here's my offer to St. Louis for Tory Krug. Just notice they're not having a good season at all, 20 and 38. They gotta be last in the west crew here has 29 points with 16 goals averaging almost 25 minutes a night and offensive defenseman is honestly something we don't have and we've really been needing so i'm offering up Trelowski. he's basically taking his spot on the nhl roster flurry three years left he's in the ahl might as well try and move him i mean those salaries there really only taking on like an extra three mil plus tampa's second round pick there the value's pretty close i feel like if this doesn't go through maybe we add like a fourth or a fifth Trades rejected. The value isn't where it needs to be. I feel like it's not that far off. I could add Fratton here, our medium elite goalie, in hopes that we can draft another one. At that point, I think the value is actually on our side, though. So that's why I really don't want to do that. All right, I'm looking at his stats right now. They're not too good in the finish league. 0.888 to 3.31. I'm not sure how much that's going to affect his growth. If it gets us Tory Krug, though, 32. We're paying him at least 36. I feel like two salary-wise, Giordano probably retires after this season, seeing as the dude's... 40 years old now, so we should be okay. Trelowski, Flurry, Fratton. We get to 87 overall D-man crew. I think it's worth it to do this. Trade is still rejected. Wow. That's insane to me. Definitely not going to give them a second, but I'll throw like, I don't know, next year's fourth round pick as well, but this seems like a lot. They said no to the fourth. I guess we're going to try adding a third. Oh my goodness. Myers, who's not signed for two seconds. Uh, no thank you, does not help us right now. And there's still that thing there was last year. If you get an offer while you're trying to make a trade happen, you have to completely redo it. Oh no, that's why they're saying no. Tory Krug no longer on the block, so they must have traded somebody else. That sucks. Alright guys, so right here I'm going for option number two in terms of getting an offensive defenseman. Keith Yangel here on the Islanders. 37 years old now, but still 83 overall. 16 assists. I think he can help out the power play. Chalowski here, 2682, wants a new contract. We have so many guys in the Myers who I think we can get cheaper and they'll probably end up being you know, within one overall of him. Makes sense to kind of flip him right now for Yandel. Islanders should say yes. I think, honestly, I, the value's on our side. Maybe we can actually pick up a pick here. Wow, they have no mid-round picks. So next year, throw in a fourth. Trades rejected. Okay. Maybe just give us, like, a seventh this year. I feel like they owe us a little bit of something. And there we go. Okay, so Yandel is seventh for Chalowski. I don't hate that. Like I was saying before, as you can see there, Krug's off the market. That kind of sucks. I feel like he really could have helped us out. Tara Vinan got traded. Aho's still available, but we can't afford him unless we traded like Beneers and Savoy. And at that point, I don't think it's worth it. Okay, guys, I think I have to make a trade for Trevor Zegris. Look at this. 22 years old, 90 overall, making 8.1 million for the next six years. I'm not sure if his value is so low because he's making a lot of money, but he's a 90 overall. going to be getting better, medium elite. Drysdale, 88 overall, making 4.8. So that is a really good contract. Maybe the contracts play a big factor, but... Like Zika's contest is not that bad. Forsberg value is just behind him. Seven years older, making like two and a half million dollars more, three overall less. Like Zika's value there, I don't know, about the end of the R. I feel like we have to go for him. Johnny Goudreau, Maddie Beneers, they're all pretty similar. 
I don't think I could give up Savoy. I wonder, do we give up Evgeny Malkin? 37 years old. He's got one year left. I mean, as much as I like Malkin, he's not getting any younger. If we could flip Malkin for Trevor Zegers. Oh, wow. This is a big trade offer as well. Washington wants to give us a third, a fourth Anthony Mantha for a second round pick, Mason Appleton. Mason Appleton's on our fourth line. Um, he helps it out, but I don't think he's on any special teams. Really, you know, he's a pretty much replacement player. Anthony Mantha could be a big player for us, could score some goals. Getting a third and a fourth round pick back as well. This is tough to say no to. I'm going to see if they'll retain maybe at least 25%, just that way we try to make something happen. Let's do one and a half mil, see what they say. Trade's accepted, okay. So we bring in Anthony Mantha for quite cheap. Like a third and a fourth is almost worth more than a second, I think, in this, because you're really just trying to get lucky. I want to see if I can get Trevor Zegers. I feel like his value is way too low. Like when we're looking at Aho, for instance, 91 overall, look how high his value is, 26. Zegers is 22, four years younger, only one overall less. It's so low there. We got to take advantage of that and try to make a trade for him. Now the Ducks like Malkin, which is a good sign. Honestly, do we give him our two firsts this year? I don't know. Uh, do we give him a first next year? Let's do Malkin and Tampa's first round pick for Trevor Zegers. If they say yes to this, highway robbery. Trades rejected. Value on the table is too far off. Is it worth both our first round picks to get Trevor Zegers? He's that good. I, we're not getting a player like him um, at the end of the first round. So, and both these should be late first rounders. I think I think we do it. Malkin, two first round picks, Trevor Zegers. We gotta get a superstar one way or another. Trade accepted, let's go. That is a big time trade offer. But like I said, Trevor Zegers, I don't know why the Ducks were valuing him so low. Aho, I think, had like, I honestly, I think it was triple the value. One overall higher. Five years older. Zekris is an absolute beast. 2290. Maybe because he doesn't have an X factor, but as we've seen, players can get them. And if he goes off, I feel like there's no reason he can't. I mean, look at his stats there. Dude is so, so good. So, yeah, he is going to be a big part of this team. Hopefully, we still have good chemistry with him, but I'm thinking between him, Savoy, Veneers, Seattle's future is looking bright. And next year, guys, are going to try and trade Hayden Fleury to the Red Wings for a third and a seventh. The second they actually don't have, and I think might have been a tad too much value. Fleury, of course, in the AHL, plus signed for three more years at 2.2. I'd rather, obviously, have that cap space if he's in the AHL. And hopefully, of course, we can get lucky with one of those two picks. Trades accepted. Okay, so making a lot of moves here at the deadline, but honestly, I like them. We bring in Trevor Zegers, Mantha, Yandel, bring in some picks on top of that. I'm happy about the team. And after all those trades, guys, you can see we actually still have a ton of picks in this year's draft. Two seconds, two thirds, three sevenths. So obviously no first round pick. We're trying to, you know, go on a deep playoff run. And I think with all those picks, we should at least get lucky a couple of times. I think Eisman was the one who said more spins at the roulette table increases your odds of winning money. And that's basically how we're treating the draft here. And looking at the trade deadline summary here, you can see we actually made the last two trades. I still can't believe Trevor Zegers from Malkin and two first round picks. Talk about Blockbuster. Scott Mayfield there going to Winnipeg. Phil Kessel goes to Philadelphia. Our trade for Mantha, our trade for Yandel. Uh, Bjork there goes to the Senators. Let's see what else do we have. Some picks there between Florida, Pittsburgh, Cedric Paquette. Their Viney went to the Vegas Golden Knights. They traded them a goalie, a second round pick, and Caden Korschak. That goalie's got to be medium elite because otherwise it makes no sense. They also got Connor Carrick with Ter Ryan as well. Mad Sauger is getting traded in another deadline. Are you kidding me? This time to Minnesota. Philadelphia there gets Mike Smith, Ryan Hartman. Uh, let's see. Dallas there gets Andre Burakovsky and a third round pick. Only had to go with a second. That seems like a very good trade. Other picks being moved. Kevin LeBanc to the Devils. Sharks get Dawson Mercer. I like that trade a lot for the Sharks. Honestly, the Devils too. Like, that's honestly a pretty fair hockey trade. Rangers get Connor Zary and Dustin Wolf from Calgary. A couple of their better prospects. Only have to go up two thirds, and I assume the two others are worse than thirds, so not a whole lot. Ryan Suter, the Red Wings. Dallas gets Freddie Anderson. Jared McIsaac, it's one of our best defensive prospects, and a fifth. And then Cal Palmieri goes to Detroit. Islanders there get a couple seconds, so I cast Detroit's going for it here. Uh, should be an interesting playoff run. Jordan Martinuk on the block. Mr. Sveshnikov himself, 31 78. I'm gonna have to decline him, but. It's kind of funny. Also, guys, look at that. Trevor Zegers is now our leading scorer with 52 points there in 62 games. And right here, guys, an update look at the roster. First line has a whole new look. Goudreau, Zegers, and Mantha. No chemistry boost, but I feel like Goudreau's got crazy hands. 98 deking. Same with Zegers. Mantha's a shooter. Hopefully, they play well. 
Um, I think the second and third lines are the same. We then have Lind, Wenberg, and Brown on the fourth line. Kind of feel bad for Wenberg, demoted from the first line to the fourth, but I noticed he was playing first line. He's got three goals on the year with 20 minutes of ice time. I would expect a bit better than that with 20 minutes of ice, you know, playing with Malik and Goudreau, 30 points total. So looking at those stats, I actually don't feel as bad. Defensively here, top four is the same. We can't break up the plus five. Latang and Giordano are getting. Flurry there playing with Yandel in terms of the special teams. Of course, we brought Yandel in to play on that, so he's on the second unit. First unit without Malkin only gets a plus two, which isn't too bad. I mean, like I said, I think Zegris, he's 15 years younger than Malkin, that we had to make that trade to make our team better in the future. Four man there, PK is a plus two. I think the three man's the same. Overall, I like the look of this team. Maybe we even bring Mantha back as well. I feel like we're going to have a lot of extra forwards. So, so the rest of the season here, hopefully make the playoffs. And then, like I said, I just like to get past the first round. And we're the end of the season here, guys. The record of 43, 33, and 6. I'm not sure if we're going to be in. Okay, 92 points. We got one of the wild card spots in the West. That was too close. Uh, Zegers, 67, 80. Malkin was definitely putting up more points. But again, I feel like this is the better move for the future. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe one of our two first round picks gets a crazy player as well. But... I feel like, you know, the risk there was definitely worth the reward. I'll take a look at the rest of the points on our team, as well as where we finished in the entire league in terms of the standings. Beniers actually had 67 points with Zegers. Zegers got to play two less games uh, due to how the schedules worked out. Beniers, 43 goals, 67 points. He's going to be a player. Look at his defensive stats. Such a good two-way player. I feel like he's got a good shot. The Calder of 67. I mean, Michkov or Bedard might have went off. Lots to see. Who drove 64? Yeah, Mono 62. I just realized we actually have a lot of smaller players on the team, but they're performing well, so who cares? Latang at almost 60 at 36 years old. Everly still put up 50 points. Schwartz, Gord, Wenberg again. Oh my god, minus 24. His contract's up. I'm not sure if I'm bringing him back. Giordano, very curious to see if he retires or not. Um, but overall, like I feel the guys are pretty good. Let's see Mantha here. How do you good how do you do playing for us? Seven points, 18 games on the first line. You'd like to see better than that. Yandel at 12 and 18. I feel like that's a pretty good trade downline acquisition, especially if he does well in the playoffs. And then Zegers for us, 15 and 18. I mean, yeah, you can't be too upset with that. Goal tending wise, Grubauer there, just over 500, a 0.9, a 3.33. Expect a bit better than that from the Vesna winner. Di Pietro stats, though, looking pretty good. Take a quick look at AHL as well. Hosang at 78 and 82. The dude is too good in AHL. He has so many good offensive stats. Tyler Steenbergen. 74 82. I mean, if he grows to an 80, that's like a nice little NHL guy we got out of nowhere. That's the line in 66. Could also get called up next year. Same with Rathbone. I feel like we got a lot of depth here, which is going to really help us out in case we're, you know, strapped against the cap. Ian Scott there, pretty nice numbers. Wallstead, even better. Maybe the HL backup goalie gets really good matchups. And that's why they're putting up such crazy numbers. Entire league here, Patty Kane, 127. Are you kidding me? Patty Kane, 127, 35 years old. Debrink at 118. Eichel, McDavid, Kucherov, Matthews, Pashnak, Kopitar, Dreisaitl. None of these guys have been traded, so no big superstar trades there. Taking a look at defenseman. McAvoy, 85. Not usually a point producer. It's kind of interesting to see there. Uh, goalies. Vasilevsky, 44 wins. Best save percentage, though. Elvis Mers Lincoln, 0.911. Only an 85. That's probably going to go up. And then rookie skaters. Come on, Beneers. Wow, Johnny Petrovicki, 69. <laughs> nice, got to hand it to him. He's got the 1T X Factor. That's definitely got to help him out. When was he drafted? 7th overall, 2023. He was drafted after Michkov and Bedard. Wow, that's surprising. There they are, Michkov at 59, only 23 goals. Bedard at 56, only 18 goals, even though he's a sniper. With <laughs> For an 18-year-old, that shot's insane. Look at his hands, too. 94 offense awareness. They're probably playing him like third or fourth line. 17 minutes. That's actually second line. 19 minutes. Mishka might have been first line. I guess for whatever reason they just didn't do as well. Beniers though, plus 13. I don't know. He's probably going to lose it to Petrovicki, which really sucks. I really want Beniers to win the Calder, but what are you going to do? So looking at the entire NHL now, Tampa Bay there wins the President's Trophy, 111. Let's see where we finished in the entire league. Buffalo's back in the playoffs. I can't believe that. We finished 12th there. Devils last playoff team, 88. And last in the NHL, Arizona County, 66. I feel like they're going to be tanking for a few years after all the moves they made, but luckily they got tons of picks to help that rebuild. Wow, Toronto Maple Leafs scored a ton, fifth in scoring, but finished 19th, missed the playoffs. Uh, we're not even on the first list of goals against here. Arizona Coyotes obviously in first. Uh, I don't even see us, so I guess we're in the middle of the pack for both goals for. Oh, wow, we need to score more because, yikes, what was that, seventh worst goals for? 
hopefully, like I said, some of our young players come along. We'll see we're playing down the first round. I guess it's either going to be the Canucks or whoever won the Central. I think it was at Chicago. It was Chicago, but we got the Canucks here in the first round. Tarasenko is now Vancouver Canuck. They must have signed him in free agency. Peterson Besser, what a nasty first line. Even second, with Colson, Horvat, Hoglander. Third ain't bad. Fourth is fine. Hughes, Myers. I mean, this team really has done nothing. Uh, Rodney Norgie was a backup. They signed Tarasenko. Like, three years in, you'd expect a little bit more movement, but see what can happen here. Last time we let a Shark beat us. Hopefully it can uh, take out the Orca. Both games in Vancouver. 3-1 win and a 3-1 loss. I think we'll take that. Hand home to Seattle now. 2-1 win. 7-5 win. Let's go. We have a 3-1 series lead. Have to win one of the next three. 5-4 OT loss there. Heading home game 6. 5-4 loss. Are you kidding me? Game 7. We're looking for our first ever playoff series win. First period. Up 2-1. Flurry Yamamoto. 4-2. Mantha Yamamoto. Come on. Yamamoto get the hat trick. 5-3. Jared Tana puts in the empty netter. No hattie for Yamamoto, but I will take the series win. Finally, I feel like we got to get that monkey off our back. Head into the second round. We have the Vegas Golden Knights. Battle of the expansion teams. Zegers there, six points in seven games through the playoffs. I love seeing that. Hopefully, we can keep it up here. So, Vegas School Knights, take a look and see what that team's looking like. Tara Vine, of course, that's who they made the trade for. They signed Hurdle, Mark Stone, that first line's deadly. Perlini, Krebs, Marcus Savo in the second. An 81 and 80. Their third line's better. Carlson, Miller, Patrick, uh, Tuck, Stevenson, Sanford. I mean, they've got a lot of depth. Defensively, Theodore and Petrangelo's so nasty top pair. Don't have a lot behind that top D pair, though. Goalies, Leonard still the starter. Only an 84 now. Wow, he dropped. Aiden Hill backing him up. Did I see Aiden Hill on X-Factor? I'm pretty sure the X-Factors, when it shows it, has to do with the Pro Scout. So we have a bad Pro Scout because I feel like there is no way 82 overall Aiden Hill has an X-Factor. So here we go. First three games in Vegas. 4-3 loss, 2-1 loss. Well, that's not good. Head home. 5-3 loss. Our season is on the line here. Game 4 in Seattle. And we get a win. 4-1. Can we keep it up? Game 5. 6-2 win. Game six at home. Can the reverse sweep happen? 5-4 OT loss. I might have jinxed it. I mean, still battled hard. Pushed six games there. Definitely an improvement on last year. And again, I feel like we have a good, young, growing team. A lot of nice pieces coming through. I'm not too upset with that, honestly. I feel like our best window to win is going to be like years five, six, and seven. So I'm just happy to see that the team's still getting better. I actually just remembered AHL team. Totally forgot to check them. And look at that. After back-to-back -back colored cups, they get beaten the first round by the Grand Rapids Griffins. You kidding me? Three games to one. And check this out, guys. Your 2024 Stanley Cup champions of the Columbus Blue Jackets. Quick uh, rebuild for them. I'd call it like a retool considering how fast they did that. And the Cup Cup champions there, the Texas Stars. I wonder, you know, did Cole Sillinger and all those other young guys play a big part in that? Kent Johnson, I would say, but I think they actually trade him away in year number one. So we'll take a look now at the wards, playoff tree. Zegers had 14 and 13. Over a point per game in the playoffs. You'll love to see that. Like I was saying, first tier playoff tree. Columbus beat the Sabres in five, Devils in six, swept the Lightning. They seem to just have Tampa's number, and then they beat Vegas in six. So good to see at least we lost to the eventual Western Conference champion in Vegas. Goudreau there at 12 and 13, same with the Yamamoto. So I feel like our players did pretty well in the playoffs. Grubauer, save percentage is fine, goals against average, uh, definitely lacking. Looking at the awards next year, I feel like we know all the team awards. Individual, Patty Kane, of course, Art Ross, and the Hearts. Charlie McAvoy there with the James Norris, Debrinkit, Lady Bing. Petro Vicky did when they call their sucks for veneers, just two points shy. Lining there, Con Smythe. Merz Lincolns did get the Vesna. Also got the Leon Jennings Trophy. Juracek there, Bill Masterton for Predators. Uh, Colorado coach Jack Adams. Very interesting, because I feel like they should have a good roster. Usually it's a bad team that makes the playoffs whose coach wins this award. I'm trying to think of it. I'm not sure if my team's ever won the Jack Adams, because either I build a good team, we make the playoffs, or I build a bad team, we miss. That's kind of funny to think about. Um, O'Reilly there, back-to-back -back Selkies. Kane also got the Ted Lindsay. Kucherov there, Marisha Shard. I think I actually forgot to sort by goals. My apologies. HL here. Finally, our color cup streak is broken, but that's okay. We didn't make the playoffs. Doesn't look like we actually even won the division. Take a look at the player awards here. Ryan Palin had most points. Crowley there, MVP. Uh, Semyonov, most goals. Nornin, outstanding rookie. Not sure who that is. Uh, Chisholm here, best D-man. Forsberg, best goalie. Damiani, MVP of the playoffs. Hosang got sportsmanship, so we've actually won that award two years in a row. That's kind of cool. Uh, Luf, I'm not sure if that's how you say it with the two O's there. Best uh, community involvement. Ian Scott had low schools against. Okay, so hopefully that'll help Ian Scott get a bit of a boost. I don't think awards are tied to progression, which I feel some should be. But I want to be optimistic here about our young players and seeing them continue to grow. Let's see the draft lottery. I'm really hoping 
Okay, yeah, because Tampa, I'm pretty sure, made the playoffs. So we didn't have a lottery pick. Rangers there go from 2 to 1. Philly jumps from 9 to 2. That's almost as big a jump as you can make because you can only move up 10 spots, remember? So Washington, for instance, couldn't pick higher than 5. That's a pretty good draft lottery for the Philadelphia Flyers. Next year, I want to take a look at the retired players because I feel like Giordano might be calling it quits. Joe Thornton, Patrick Marlowe retired together. Thornton there was on Montreal. Marlowe was in the AHL. Uh, Stahl, of course, had a pretty good season for us. Corey Perry, Shea Weber, Ocposo, Little, Goligoski, Seabrook. I'm not seeing Giordano. I feel like he'd have... Yeah, he's definitely got more than 200 points. So Giordano's coming back. He's 41 years old, but he's our captain. I'm holding on to him. Carry Ramo there, and that's really it for goalies. So um, I'm just on the way to see, I think, Flair retire. And we're now at the draft here, guys. Flyers have the second overall pick on the block. So again, I hate how like if a team makes a big jump, they have it for trade. Although we don't really know um, what players are available. This is my first time looking at the draft class. A couple of medium elites, but I mean, still, you're probably best off keeping the medium elite. Nolan Oleski here, NHL ETA. He's NHL ready. Miku Koivu, similar player. Interesting. Make it snappy, X-Factor. Take a look at potentials. Any, wow, 44. Georgievic, I think I said it right. Low franchise, that's a cool one to see. Uh, guaranteed medium league goalie there, 66. We want him as well. So, we need a second rounder for Georgievic. We need a third for Dunham. Um, oh my god, Rhodes here, 89. I guess it's not guaranteed, but it's very likely that they're both medium elites there. Same with this goalie here, Sokolov. Uh, Bieksa might be eighth overall, so probably is. Let's see, gems here as well. Wesley here's a gem, but they're thinking he's a low elite and he's gonna go early second. So maybe he's just like high rated or not even NHL ETA three years. All right, so I'm thinking we can get the low franchise and the probably medium elite with our second and third rounders. All right guys, so right here I'm actually trying to make a trade. The Philadelphia Flyers to move up 10 spots in the draft to make sure we get a chance at that low franchise guy. Adding Anthony Mantha, looking at our forwards. I don't think we can resign him. As Matthew Savoy is making the team next year, maybe he'll play that first line right wing. We just don't have the room. So hopefully he's like the difference between those 10 spots. Trade rejected. I felt like that was pretty fair. Anthony Mantha kind of, you know, he's 6'5". He seems like a Flyers player. Try adding a 5th and a 7th here to make them say yes. And they do okay. Seems like a lot to move up 10 spots, but if that guy is good, I think it's worth it. Next year, guys, trying to send Wenberg back to the Blue Jackets for a 7th. Just get something for him. Like I said, don't see us bringing him back. They say yes. I think I'm going to do the same thing with Keith Yandel as well. I feel like we had all that depth in the AHL. Lucas Johansson probably could make the team next year. Needle's 37. If he asks for like any money, not worth it. Maybe we sign him to Boston. Because I'm pretty sure he's from Boston. He'd probably like that. I feel like uh, we'll be good guys here. We'll just ask for, oh my gosh, they have three six round picks. Will they give us one of them? We're going to have to retain salary again. It's so annoying because obviously we know his salary's up. Sixth rounder for Yandel. Trades rejected. Okay, so I think the seventh's our only option. They probably give it to us. There we go. So you can get a seventh basically for signing rights. That's about it. We have five seventh round picks, I think now. Or sorry, four. Okay. So still, uh, hopefully we can at least get somebody there. I'm going to sim the rest of the first round. I think I trade away everyone I wanted to. I'll take a look and see how it went down. So Lundberg, 83 medium elite. Oleski there, also 83 medium elite. And like I was saying, why would the Flyers want to trade that? Um, 81, 82, 82. Top five, they're looking pretty nice, but also just pretty standard. All low 80s, medium elite. Oh, this guy. Oh, wow. Actually, Ottawa Edmonton, 280 medium top fours right out of the draft. That's really nice. Geisberg, 79 medium top four, 79 medium top six. So a lot of guys were actually more NHL ready. Wow. Sopel there, 80 medium top four. Bufflin, 78 medium top four. 80 medium top four. These guys are quite high rated with decent potential. You don't usually see that um, in previous games. Like, they'd be 60s. Peluso on Flames, 71 medium elite, 23rd pick. It's kind of dumb, though, because, like, so the beginning of the first round there, all these guys were like high 70s, mid 70s in the first round. But the real draft, the players come out worse than that. So basically these created guys, we're going to see deeper in the franchise opposed to real life players. Like, I don't know about that one. We're going to send our pick here. Take a shot at the low franchise guy. I don't think I've ever drafted a franchise player outside of like the first two picks. So if he's somehow franchised, I don't care if he's low franchise, this might be the best pick I've ever made in franchise. And he's low elite. <laughs> I hyped it up big time because I knew there was a chance. Now I'm a little bit worried. That goalie we want, Central Scouting has him at 62. I think I'm going to risk it though. Risk it for the biscuit. Okay, defenseman, right winger, right winger. He should still be there. Literally the next pick. He is Daniel Dunham from the Ukraine. 
66 medium elite let's go so i feel like our goalie prospects now are looking really nice next pick here is number 70 we actually have back-to-back -back picks 70 71 this goalie here is 50 50 medium elite but i believe there was somebody better uh Rhodes here i like him a lot should be a medium elite plus he's a center you also got sokolov there better chance to be a medium elite than that goalie who's up next so we're gonna take Rhodes. not gonna risk it he's x factor 53 medium elite in the third round that is a great pick Next year, let's go with Central Scouting. Um, Sergeyev, what's your NHL ETA? They think two years. Power forward, is there something better? Guaranteed low top six, it's not bad. The guaranteed low top six has an NHL ETA of three years, which means he's actually probably pretty high rated. Dang, it's either him or the right winger. NHL ETA two years, let's go with it. He's probably low elite. And he is low elite, 62 overall grinder. I feel like he could end up being like a really solid fourth liner for us. Pick 179. I think our goalie should still be there. I hope our goalie's still there. Oh my goodness, I guess I sent him too far. I thought he was like 180 something, but maybe he just got picked. Luckily, um, McKinley here should be a low top six. Let's go for him. He's a low top 958. That's not terrible though. I'm pretty sure Duran was the goalie we we're gonna take. Islanders took him here. Only medium fringe, so really not a big loss at all. Now, who is Sokolov the Islanders took? He was medium elite. Honestly, it's tough to keep track of all the made-up names. Scout likes this guy, medium elite. I highly doubt it, but whatever. Lieb, medium backup. Next one here, trying to find a good player. Uh, Kasparitis, 50-50, low elite. Low top nine, he's never gonna see the NHL. Come on, honestly, that guy's probably never gonna see the AHL. Now we have two guys, might be low top six. One's got the star, Jonas Turris. Low elite, 49, he's an enforcer. I don't think I've like ever had an enforcer on our team. And we actually had the last pick in the draft, that's kinda cool. I would love if like we had an enforcer on the fourth line, kinda like a Doug Glad or whatever. Um, this Finnish dude could be a medium top or defenseman. Last pick in the draft, make a name for himself. Uh, medium seventh, okay, not terrible, but he might play AHL and that'd be it. And after we sign our head coach here, guys, one thing I like doing is keeping the same head coach throughout the entire franchise. That way I actually get a record of what I've done. Obviously to do this, you first wanna make sure you like your head coach. I feel like ours is pretty good. Like we were getting plus five in the power play, plus five top D pair. We had pretty decent chemistry. If you notice your coach that you started out with in franchise sucks, just fire him before you play your first game, hire a new one, and then keep him the rest of the 10 years. I feel like that's really the only way to get a record of your success. And we're at the resign phase here, guys, with almost $36 million in cap space. Zegers, of course, our top player. Matty Beniers is up to an 86. You love seeing that. Uh, Kelly Amato there needs a new contract. Ebley's also bounced back a bit. It was an 82, now an 84. Again, he's on a thumbnail. He wears an A. We got to keep him. 3.6 for one year. That is more than reasonable. Two years, 3.7. Until he's 36. I mean, might as well do one year. Seems like just a very fair contract from Ebley. Yamamoto's yeah, been playing well. He wants paid $7 million. Really, that's not that unrealistic. Four years, 6.3. We save almost a million. I don't really know what the situation is going to be like. If we can save a million bucks, do one last year, four years, $6 million. I think that's the way to go. That pays until he's 29. After that, let's see. Chris Letang's down to an 83. He was making $9 million last year. He wants six still. That's so expensive. I mean, if we keep Giordano... He's playing like an 88, Giordano's still an 82, so he'd be playing like an 87, he wants three point, he wants a two year contract at 40 years old. Get out of here, like he's lucky he's the captain and I'm just feeling a little sentimental, I'm gonna give him three. The tank's one overall, he does not deserve 6.3, uh, there's nothing to really do. I I'm gonna offer him five, which I still think is expensive. I don't know why he's asking for so much money with that rating. I guess he did have a good season last year, but like, the rating does not reflect it at all. Condre Miller's contract is actually insane. 1.8 million there. Christian Vessel line in here up to an 82. Needs a new contract. He's definitely gonna be in the NHL this season. 1.5 for two years. Seems very fair to me. Um, still being RFA after that as well. Let's try 1.3. Every little bit counts. And Matthew Savoy also needs a contract. He just hasn't gotten his rookie contract yet. We'll give him the max deal. Make sure he's happy and he's signed. Lucas Johansson could make NHL team this year. Wow. That is so cheap for an 81. What's crazy, so that's an 81 asked for when he's been playing in the AHL or whatever. And an 81 in free agency is asking for like 2.53. An 82 is asking for like four and a half. So one overall and we're saving $4 million. It's pretty incredible. Susie here also asking for no money. Like that's so good. If we need to throw them in, we're just having that option. Dustin Brown, 39. 
I'll let him play with us till he's 40. I'll give him a million bucks. I feel like he's got to help out the fourth line at least. Just kind of a guy who goes out there and hits. Uh, looks like basically AHL after that. Goal tiny wise, Grubauer's down to an 85. That kind of sucks. I mean, he did have a rough year, but goalies in this game, even long after they're done growing, they can be like 40 years old and they'll bounce all around overall. They'll drop, they'll spike up. Ian Scott there, still at 77. I feel like we resign him. Walsh and him look to be a pretty decent tandem. Um, let's do two years, 800k, basically until he's done growing, see where he ends up. And look at that, behind Scott and Wallstead, we got two medium league goalies. Like I said, I think we're pretty set for our goalie future. And as you can see there, the head coach is coming back, good to see. I don't think we actually have enough money for like the associate and the assistant coach, but I can just wait till free agency starts, resign them with owner mode turned off. Best of line there is joining the team. Yeah, Mono took that uh, $6 million, so we saved a bit of money. Okay, Dustin Brown, not content with the amount of minutes he played. He was fourth liner, so it's whatever. Latang there feels he's worth more money. Honestly, we can probably pay Latang. I don't want to, um, but Giordano's back, so I know he's gonna be playing like an 88. Looks like everyone else signed, so good to see. Still have 24 million. Even if we give Latang six or whatever, we'll have 18 million dollars. We can go get like two superstars, nine million each, just to be a dick. I'm gonna give Latang 5.75 because I don't think he's worth six. And there we go. Latang does come back at 5.75. So we have 19 million dollars there. And what's crazy is like, we could actually just rock this team next year, we'd be fine. Like we have 12 NHL forwards. Um, defensively, it'd be a little rough. Letang and Giordano were like quite heavily on that plus five. I'm pretty sure Letang just grew in rating after we signed him. I swear he was 83, unless I am <laughs> got some short term memory loss. Fabro, Miller, Flurry, Johansson, like yeah, like our NHLD could be fine. I'd really love to sign a true number one though, if they're available. And the AHLD I think is in good hands as well, but uh, like I was saying, we gotta sign the AHL players now and then look for some superstars in free agency. As I'm resigning the AHL players, guys, Abram up here, remember we made an early trade for, he never really grew, 2371, but I'm gonna keep him, hopefully he's like an AHL all-star. Luke Hemming here as well, first ever player to sign with the crack, and we gotta keep him, at least until he's like done growing. I'd like to see him maybe win a Calder Cup or something with the AHL team, although he might have been fourth line that first day when they called their Cup, so I take that back. Uh, it would be cool to actually see him like, you know, in the top six, getting a lot of minutes though. And the final player we have to make a decision on guys is Dustin Brown, but I'm thinking he want to come back, can probably get somebody similar if we need to. Honestly, I think we have a lot of AHL guys who could probably make this jump to the NHL. So everyone here signed, Bradley Yui there, I think it's just another AHL dude. I'm really excited for free agency. I'm hoping there's a number one D-man available. That's the main thing. Offensively, I don't know, maybe a scorer to play with Zegras, Goudreau, Austin Matthews. Wow, I mean, that's a scorer, 26. Yeah, he's on RFA, 94 overall medium franchise. <laughs> wow. I know a lot of people thought he's going to go to Arizona, but I think uh, the Kraken are going to come in with a big offer on Matthews. Sebastian now is also available, 92 there, wants about $2 million less. Tyler Toffoli, up to an 87, wants almost $12 million. He was making like $6 million, I think, when we got that trade offer. That's insane. Like, you might as well spend an extra $2 million and get seven overall and like, one of the best players in the game right now in math. He's easily top five, probably top three. I like that Dutch trade, Malkin there, 86 overall. So uh, they did not keep him. That actually reminds me, I totally forgot in the first round. I want to see who the Ducks got with our two first round picks. All right, guys, looking at the Ducks right now, this BX guy, 1869 PM top four was their eighth overall pick. That was their pick. They actually did better with our pick. Kopitz here, 1876 medium top four with the 19th pick. Well done. Then I thought Stewart was the other one. I was like, are you kidding me? 1877 medium top six, but they actually got him in the second round. I can't find their third first round pick. Maybe he just absolutely sucks. I don't know. But uh, one thing I totally forgot to do when looking at the first round. So in regards to free agency here, I think Austin Matthews is a must. We have to go after him. Now in terms of defense, all I see is forwards. I feel like every team is locking up their D and yeah, Jake Muslin there is the best one available. That sucks because we don't really have any great D prospects coming through. I feel like we have decent defense in terms of depth, but it looks like we have to trade if we want a number one defenseman. That's going to be a tough thing to trade for. And look at Matthew's stats last year, guys. Two goals shy of 50, so he had 103 points. Look at the shot. 99 wrist shot accuracy. Fits in the top six. Yeah, I'd hope so. Okay, and also too, like I said, with the pro scout. You know his zone ability is shock and awe, but it's showing there it might be puck on a string, so... Yeah, I guess you need to have pro scouts to know exactly what the X-Factors are. Honestly, we have 19 million in cap space. I feel like Austin Matthews is worth literally a max contract. I'm going to give him $15 million here for seven years. We have seven years left in the franchise. I don't think he's not worth it. He's just that good. I think we can build the rest of the team around him. That is such a big contract. 
two and a half million dollars more than McDavid. But he's also getting this contract six years after McDavid signed his. <sighs> Hopefully that's not a stupid move. 15 million, Austin Matthews. Gonna make him the highest paid player in the NHL to come to Seattle. Let's take a quick look here at two-way players with good potential. See if there's any like steals here. Ryan Paling, didn't he just lead the HL in points? 25-78. Why would Montreal let him go? Like, that doesn't make any sense logically. We can get him locked up for two years. Definitely doing that. Kreider here, 1954, low top six. I feel like take a flyer on him, maybe he turns out. A couple other similar players there. Iverson, Hedstrom, they're 20, mid-50s, low top six potential. Lions Anderson, 2578. I feel like he could at least turn into an AHLer for us. Let's do two years, 800K. I also like Emil Pemstrom, 2580. Wow, uh, could probably jump into the fourth line of the NHL. Kershev, 2479. Might actually have to trade away a bad contract because I think we just offered like almost our max. Casey Middlestat, 2579, medium top six. In free agency, wow. He's just trying to get an NHL job. We'll give him one. Even Dominic Bach here, 2476. I like all these guys like come to the team. Uh, so yeah, we definitely have to trade away a few bad contracts. I didn't realize I was only in forwards. Defensively here, Martins 2055 low elite. Give him the max entry level. Jared McIsaac 2475. That's why the Red Wings trade him. He's actually not looking great, but we need some HLD. I think we need at least two to have a team. Could bring back Antoni Honka 2373. I feel like I was more than fine with him on the team. Auk Hotyuk, I think I butchered his name. Second rounder by the Devils 2377. That's actually like pretty good. You can see him playing in our top four. Let's try three years. I also bring back Honka just to make sure we got guys. I just saw Alec Regula though, 23.79. I'm basically just signing like a bunch of really good, cheap guys. Like we're getting 850k, get them three years. They should say yes if they grow good. If not, it really doesn't hurt us at all. Um, Simek 31. Yeah, we don't want him. We want people that can grow. I like these uh, two-way deals we made so far. Goaltenders, Hunter Jones. Why is Hunter Jones available? That makes no sense. He's a 79 at 23. Stock guard after being traded by seemingly everybody is available in free agency as well. I feel like I want both these guys. They're actually higher rated than Scott. Honestly, guys, looking at the two goalies, even though Jones is one overall higher, I'm thinking Stock guard just because the dude's 6'7. He's also got an X factor. I'm not sure how much the size plays a factor. You gotta think a little bit. We'll try again. Three years, 850k. Uh, low risk. Probably trade Scott at this point, honestly. We can't trade Wallstedt. Scott's played well for us, but Sagar just you know, seems like the player to have. So right here, guys, trying to trade five more contracts to the Devils. Ian Scott, Nate Schnarr, Twinsky, Ronnie, Woodworth. Uh, they're not bad. Like, honestly, I didn't really keep anything that was bad. But I feel like the guys who made offers on in free agency are just better. Let's see what the Devils say to this one. Trade accepted. So basically a free third rounder. Assuming they sign with us. We saw, I think, uh, a couple free agencies ago. They're not always going to sign, but I want to make sure the spots were open. If we can get Austin Matthews here, that'll just be insane. A second in Dugan for two thirds. Interesting. I feel like I'm gonna say no to that. Just cause the second's a couple years out, I'm not sure how good the team's gonna be. Abram and Hosang are fourth and sixth. Hosang's a HL All-Star, I'm holding on to him. Uh, so Hedstrom there accepts, he's a center with potential. Same with Iverson, Martins, Kreider, a bunch of these just AHL guys. Uh, Dugan in two thirds for a second and a fourth. Now that, I like the sound of the second you get the best pick. Dugan's just like, he's nothing. He's like an AHL dude. Opened up another contract spot for us. So there we go. Casey Middlestad joining the team. They'll either be fourth line NHL or in the AHL. Kershev though, there you go. Goes to Florida like I was saying. We're not always going to get guys, but I want to have the spots. Emil Bemstrom accepts. I think we got all these guys too, like three years, 850k. Um, Anderson rejected. Roster still full. I traded away six contracts. That's crazy. Uh, Ludwig there accepts. Dominic Bog. Jarek McIsaac. Ryan Paling, roster's full. Uh, Regula, Akhotyuk, I, mean, I know I'm butchering it. Mad Sawgard, Tony Honka. Oh no, we have to stop simulating. Okay, we stopped in time because Matthews hasn't made his decision yet. Imagine he wants to sign with us and our roster's full. I gotta go trade away a uh, few guys because I still would like to get Paling and Anderson. I'm not sure if this is gonna work, guys. I'm trying to get a second round pick from Boston now. We just signed Honka. I noticed he's like our eighth best AHLD man. So he signed too many defensemen. Uh, Nathan Bastian, just like an okay HL player. Abramov here I was talking about. Honestly, 2371, he's probably not going to become an 80. Looking at it, the value is on their side. If we can flip a fourth into a second, just giving up some extra guys. Trades rejected, fair enough. Maybe just do the third, the Devils third to the Boston second. 
Wow. Honestly, I'll take a third rounder next year if they're willing to do it. And there we go. Okay, so picking up extra picks here, clearing spots. I like that. You like that? And still waiting to hear back here from Matthew's decision. There we go. Truly humbled. You chose to offer such a lucrative contract. Won't let you down. I mean, you better not. We are relying on Matthews to carry this franchise to a Stanley Cup. I don't think the Leafs have won yet, so hopefully we can do it in Seattle. We still have $5 million there to spend. Um, I feel like the rest of the team around him should be pretty good. I might put Zegers, honestly, just on the wing, uh, on his one wing, Goudreau on the other, and just kind of hope for the best there. Perron's up to an 88 now. Wow. 36 years old, he's still playing really well. Maybe should have held on to him. Wheeler there, 88, still at 37. Lindholm, could we really get anything worth it? I feel like it's probably smarter to keep that money. Backland here, 35, 85, 3.8. Could be a really solid third line center. He fits the third line, at least he's supposed to. One year deal, JVR there. Sniper, I feel like you kind of have him. I'm just thinking Backlund would really help out the PK. Jonathan Tays, 82, 1.6. D stats are still incredible. Imagine him fourth line center. I think I'm gonna give an offer to Tays and Backlund. Should be able to bring in both of them. And like I said, I think they really help out with the PK, which kind of been lacking for us. Two years. Um Sure, we'll do two years, 1.6. I mean, it's Jonathan Taze. And I'll try and get back on as well. One year, 3.8. See what those two guys say. In terms of the defense, I feel like just for now, we have to continue, you know, deep high committee. None of these guys really improve our defense at all. They're in free agency. So uh, until we can get a number one, whether it's through free agency, the draft, making a trade, we just got to stick with the guys we have. And there we go. Backlund does accept the offer. And Taze is joining the team as well. Let's go. Also, guys, totally forgot. I still want to sign both Elias Anderson and Ryan Palin. 25. So I'm going to give them both two-year 850k deals. Now, I'll have to trade a couple of guys. But I've actually already found two people we can do. So right here, guys, I'm offering Svechnikov and Tuff to the Leafs for a fourth rounder. Svechnikov's an 80, but he's a sniper. Doesn't really fit on the fourth line. Uh, Tuff there hasn't signed his qualifying offer yet. Also, just kind of being a dick after signing Matthews. Seeing if the Leafs will say yes to this. And they do. So we get a fourth from them. I wanted to show you guys Austin Matthews trade value. It's the max. It's insane. Even at 15 million, 26, 94 franchise potential. That is crazy. Because you got to think too, like the old max was already a great player. The new max, when you look at the fact, you know, Savoy, Zegris, 23, 90. Matthews looks to be worth about three and a half Zegrises. Like that's absolutely incredible. Uh, if you're wondering as well, I was taking a look at McKinnon as well as McDavid Dreisaitl. McKinnon there is also the max. Same goes for McDavid and Dreisaitl now. And I can't believe Edmonton has Shane Wright. And I mean, look at Shane Wright's value. Like it should be honestly even higher than that, I think. But honestly, looking at the trade value alone, I think makes Matthews worth that contract because we can basically trade him for any player we want. And when I was looking at our defenseman guys, I noticed this Georgievec guy has really good trade value. He's 1763 with the quick pick zone ability that's guaranteed. He also has four superstar abilities. That's pretty nuts. So he's got five X factors, which usually you see on like a superstar. I think this guy could turn into our number one defenseman of the future. All right, guys, so now let's start next season. Our team stats, there you can see, is considered a buyer. I realized, though, after the first season, all that is is showing what you had at the last deadline. I made ours considered a buyer at the last deadline, so I really don't have to pay that any mind. Our team is insane. First line, Goudreau, Matthew, Savoy get a plus five. I don't know why it took me so long to realize, guys, but I think the only way to get a plus five on a even strength line, whether it be forward or defense, is to have an X factor in each position. You can see Savoy here has the third eye. I think he's got like four X factors total. Matthews, of course, has shock and awe. He's got six total. Goudreau doesn't have like a zone ability, but he's got four X factors. It's close enough. They get a plus five. You look at our defense, the reason Giordano and Tang have had plus five is because they also both have X factors. So cool to see that, you know, you can get plus five from having X factors, but I wish the actual chemistry like played in effect. The player type, it'd be cool as well. If like guys play together for a while, they can build chemistry. You can see Savoy there, his line fits terrible, but it doesn't matter. He has the X factor, he gets plus five. I don't understand defense. Condre Miller and Fabro could get a plus three. They have perfect line fit. I'm thinking that's probably the match you can get without an X Factor. So keep that in mind uh, when you are building your team, trying to work out the chemistry. Now, after that first line, guys, which is insane, I think Savoy with Matthews with Goudreau is going to have a great year. Maybe he'll win the call this year. Hopefully, he can pop off, put some points up, growing overall. You got Eberle, Beneers, and Zegris, which is such a nasty second line. I'm wondering, yeah, you can see Zegris there. It goes to a plus one. They don't have an X Factor. Uh, Schwartz, Gordiel, Model on the third gets a plus one. Then we have Veselainen, Taze, and Backlund on the fourth line. No chemistry boost, but great defensive players. Backlund there, 89D awareness and shot block, 92 stick check. Taze, 
87 with a 92 faceoff. That's the line, and even 88 deer awareness, 90 speed. Like that fourth line, I think, is very, very solid. Uh, defensively, it was already showing it a bit, but you know, Hanson Miller is the second pair as Flurry Fabro get a plus two. Goaltending wise, Grubauer, I mentioned, is only an 85 now. Di Pietro there is still an 82. Also, guys, our first power play with Matthews in the mix now plus five. Four man here as well as a plus three. I haven't actually touched any of the special teams yet, so I'm gonna have to fix that second unit, get rid of the minus one. But so far, really liking how the chemistry looks. In terms of the AHL, uh, I mean, look at that. You got plus one the first three lines, and you got everyone in the high 70s, if not 80. Like, that looks so good. Again, you can see, I feel like the AHL team will probably never get a plus five because <laughs> they don't have X factors. Top pair, Susie and Rathbone there, get a plus three. Regula and Ock Hot Yuck get a plus two. Ludwig, Wallander, uh, zero. But I mean, we got a good player. Sauger's down 86-7. Wallstead backing him up. Um, again, I feel like both these teams look really, really good, especially the NHL team. I think Matthews uh, just, you know, basically brings us to that next level. Take a look at the overalls now. Offense, defense, goaltending. Look at that. We got three players there with zone abilities. Ratings, 97 offense. That's insane. 88 defense, 85 goaltending. Right there, you got your first look at Matthews as a Seattle Kraken. So, Hope for big things from this team in season four. If you guys enjoyed this episode, make sure you leave a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the sub button. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.